Hi, my name is Ganesh and I work with the WAN Access team in Cisco DAC. Today, I will be talking to you about some basic troubleshooting steps that you can follow when you observe the line protocol to be down under the POS interface. The first step is to check the show interface output. In the below example, we can see that the POS is up but the line protocol is down. The encapsulation has been set to PPP, loopback has not been set. The keep alive has been set to 10 seconds. Under the show interface output, there are three important parameters that we need to check. Input errors, CRC, and the interface resets. If you observe these three parameters to be incrementing, this points to a layer one issue, which means the problem could be with the hardware or the line. To isolate this, we will perform loopback tests. I will be talking about the different loopback tests that we can perform towards the end of the presentation. Next, we need to check the show controller output. In the diagram, we can see that the connection between the local router and the remote router has some regenerators and ADM in between. The connection between the router and the regenerator is called a section, between the router and the ADM is called a line, and between the local router and the remote router is called the path. Under the show controller output, we need to check five parameters, LOF, which indicates framing mismatch between the router and the regenerator, LOS, which indicates signaling issues, B1, B2, and B3. B1 indicates any errors between the router and the regenerator, B2 indicates any errors in between the router and the ADM, and B3 indicates any errors between the local router and the remote router. We can also enable alarms for these errors which will be indicated under the active defects and active alarms. Next, let's have a look at how to troubleshoot line protocol down with encapsulation PPP. The debug commands used here are debug PPP negotiation and debug PPP packets. There are three main types of packet classes, link configuration, link termination, and link maintenance. Link configuration is used to establish and configure the link. Link termination is used to terminate the link. And link maintenance is used to debug and maintain the link. Now, let's have a look at the routers and see how these work. As you can see here, the pause is up, the line protocol is down, the encapsulation has been set to HDLC and loopback has not been set, and the keep alive has been set to 10 seconds. You can also see that there are no input or CRC errors and there are no interface resets. Now let's change the encapsulation to PPP. Also, let's enable the debug PPP negotiation to see how the air negotiation happens. As you can see here, first we are sending an outbound configuration request for which we receive an inbound configuration acknowledge. Then we get an inbound configuration request from the peer router for which we send an outbound configuration acknowledge. And then the PPP phase is coming up and then we have added a route to the peer. Now the peer will be reachable. As you can see, the pings are successful. Now, if we shut down the interface, we will be terminating the link by sending an outbound termination request. As you can see here, we are sending an outbound termination request and the link will be terminated. Now let us have a look at the link maintenance. The two routers exchange echo requests and echo replies for the link maintenance to know that the peer side is active. Next, let's have a look at the loopback test. There are two types of loopback tests, software loopback and hardware loopback. Under software loopback, we have loopback internal and loopback line. These are simple iOS commands which we will give under the interface. The loopback internal means that the packets going out of the transmission will be looped back to the receiver. In loopback line, we will be looping all the packets towards the remote end. Let's have a look at the routers and how this can be done. While performing loopback tests, it is always good to have the default configuration under the interface.
To enable loopback, we'll need to go under the interface and give the command loopback internal. As we can see here, the interface is up, up and looped. The loopback set is internal. Once the loopback has been set, we will configure an IP address under the interface and run extended self pings. So I'm setting the IP address as 10111. Then we give ping 10111 size of 1500, the repeat count of 100 and data as 0, 0, 0, 0 first. So as we can see that there are no drops. Next we can give the data to be 0, 0, 0055. 5. Again we see no drops. Then we can give 0, 0, FF. Again we see no drops. So if we don't observe any drops, this means that there is no problem with the hardware and the issue is with the line and this has to be checked with the service provider. Similarly, we can also give loopback line and run extended pings on the remote end. The second type of loopback test is the hardware loopback test where we physically take the cable from the transmitter and plug it back into the receiver and then we run the same extended pings with different patterns to observe if there are any drops. If there are any drops, then it means the hardware is faulty. If there are no drops, then the issue is beyond the router. And again, the service provider will have to check it. So for any reference, you can check the below document. With that, I come to the end of my presentation. I hope you found it useful. Thank you.